<clears throat> good morning, good morning. It is 3.02 a.m. I'm on my way to the gym right now. When I get ready to go to the gym, I already know in my mind. I already have a preconceived idea about what kind of workout I want to have. I know what body part I want to work. I've even envisioned how that muscle is going to grow. The more that I can see, you know, the definition in my body, the more I can start <clears throat> being more intentional about how I want to see that muscle grow. But I guess my point by saying all that is, is I envision what I want and it makes it easier to go after it and get it. And this morning, you know, I got down and I said my prayers. I remember getting on the phone yesterday <clears throat> and said, hey, I told my, told my wife, remember that situation we were in? I said, doesn't it look like we came out of that? Like, and it was a situation where, I mean, it really, it looked, I'm not going to say bad. But it just looked like anything that could happen was happening. I mean, I mean, I mean, literally. I mean, I had to stop myself from making comments like, uh, "It's got to get worse before it gets better," because I, I seen it kept getting worse, and I was like, "I need to stop talking like that," because I was pretty much welcoming that into my realm. And I said, I said doesn't seem like everything's working out a little bit better and it's moving in the right direction. Said, yeah. I said, yeah, it is. So I got down and I prayed this morning and as I was praying, you know, it came to me. It came to me, one, to pray for other people who are hurt. And I believe there's a lot of hurt people there's a lot emotionally hurt people. There's a lot physically hurt people. There's a lot financially hurt people. There's a lot of hurt people. I mean, people who aren't even living. They're just alive. And it said, pray for them. But what that came to me was... You know, my situation was was a very was a mounting situation. I mean, things were like compiling, and I just stayed in faith. And when I needed an answer to something, instead of being reactive. I was more intentional. So, you know, when something happens, you know, people want to voice it and vocalize it and expound on the, on the reason and, um, you know, solicit information, hoping someone could deliver them an answer versus being quiet and waiting for an answer to come. I became more quiet and waited on an answer to come. <clears throat> and they were coming in these small little nuances of, of conversation. And it said, do this and do that, and do this and do that. And every time I would wait, like something would happen, then I would wait and I would wait for an answer to come. As soon as the answer came, I would go into action. And it's, it's proven to be beneficial by, by, by being that way, especially when things are happening to you or for you. And at the end of the day, what thought that came to me was, How many times have you been in a situation 
where instead of praying for an answer, you became reactionary. You were all over Facebook. Oh, look at what happened to me. And you was all on the phone. Look at what happened to me. And not once did you stop to consider that the, the same person that allowed it to happen is the same one that can fix it. Never once did you get on your knees to God and just say, if this is your will, this is your bill. If this is for you, if this is a process for me or a stepping stone for me that you want me to get through, I ask that you do it with you with me. Right? But I guess my, my question is, how far were you away from a solution had you not spent any of that time complaining? Or talking it up as if it was no solution whatsoever? You know, anytime you're in the middle of something, it always feels like forever. When I was in prison, it felt like forever. When I was getting sentenced, it felt like forever. When the judge hit the gavel, and gave me those sentences. He said, eight years on this charge, eight years on this charge, see you later. All I could think was, how am I going to do this time? Do you know that I've been to prison for as long as some of your kids is old? But I made it. And even though in the throes of things, it looks like forever, trust me, this period of, of <clears throat> devastation that I was going through, we were going through, it really seemed forever. But I had to remind myself that one twist of fate can change the whole story. When uh, me, my wife, and my daughter got into that car accident, I remember, I remember what happened. And the funny thing was we were on our way. We, we had just dropped off some gifts at my office for this, this, uh, this charity event. It's a great charity event. My, my daughter's actually going to be going to it. And I said, well, let me go ahead and do it right now because they're going to come pick them up in the morning. So I'll just leave them at my office and then come pick it up in the morning. And what ends up happening is as we're leaving, I said, let's grab something to eat. It was like seven o'clock at night, but there was this Panera bread right up the street and they had this, um, this honey walnut cream cheese and then these bagels. I said, I said, let's go get that. And so instead of getting on the freeway, let's go this way. And out of nowhere, we end up finding ourselves driving down the street and next thing we know, we see a car spinning out of control coming right at us. And I remember, and my wife will tell you this, I remember just not grabbing the wheel, but placing my hand, because I was in the passenger seat, on the wheel, looking at my wife, looking at my daughter, turning back to the street, 
and in a split second as all this is happening and my hand is on the wheel guiding it in a different direction because I see everything kind of in slow motion most athletes most athletes have that ability they can slow the play down in their mind fast enough to be able to make a play so jump catch grab tuck hit the ground run left right defenders coming at you most athletes have the ability to slow the play down i slowed the play down but i remember looking at them both and my wife will say this i looked at her and i said don't worry it's gonna be okay and we hadn't even been impacted yet but because i knew what was going on in the scenario I felt confident to say, it's gonna be okay. You gotta have that same kind of trust in God when things is not going the way you planned it to take your hands off the steering wheel, let God put his hands on the steering wheel of your life and let him guide it. And sometimes, I never ever suggest you don't go into action. I think when things are going wrong, you need to go into massive action. I think if you get fired from one job, you need to go look for 50 jobs. I think you need to humble yourself and say, I will scrub your toilets. I think you need to get a paper route. I think you need to do anything. I don't care about what you qualified to do. I don't care if it's underneath your pay rate. I don't care. Nothing from nothing is nothing. When you get fired, you need to put something on your plate. So when you take your hands off, you let God put his hands on. And you stay taking action. Better yet, instead of just taking action, you stay in prayer. You stay in prayer. And you believe that it will turn out. Now, some people might be thinking, well, when, when, how long do I have to believe if it's not working until it works? When we were going through our situation, and I, I'll tell you, it was, it was finances. I mean, everything was falling apart. I had, I don't know, maybe $2 million worth of transactions fall through out of, no, of the funniest out of nowhere situation. I mean, literally. I mean, there was stuff happening that I was looking at it like, my pastor said, what kind of meat is this? That's how I was looking at it. Like, what kind of meat is this? Like, what is, what, what's happening? And, um, but I just kept saying, I, I kept saying, all it takes is God to give me one one little piece of favor it doesn't even have to be super magnificent huge in abundance all you gotta do is give me one favor and then I remember the scripture saying let your blessings find you working so I was like well if my blessing is gonna show up I need to be ready for it So let your blessings find you working. But don't give up. And you keep staying in faith. Even when it looks like it's not happening. Even when it looks like it's not working, you keep staying in faith. That's not a, 
That's not a sucker bet. That's not a sucker bet. A sucker, a sucker bet. Here's a here. Stand in faith when you when you don't see it working. See, here's here's what here's what the fool would do. The fool would curse God and then go against what he said not to do just to try to get the get the problem solved faster. And it never works out when you try to get it solved faster. But let me paint this picture. A sucker bet is it, that's a sucker bet. What's not a sucker bet is when you lean back and you trust that a change will happen and that literally if you find yourself working something will give but you have to be in a position of faith to receive it it works